everything over for this video, okay? So if you guys weren't caught up, go ahead and do this with me. So whenever you're in Photoshop to start a new, you're gonna go file, new, and then your title for today is gonna be who's in your group with you. Um, so I can see that at the end of the hour and grade it from that. Other times you can just title it your name if you guys want. The width is 11, the height is 17, but you have to make sure that you are on inches and not pixels. A lot of times it defaults to pixels. And then your resolution needs to be 300 and then you're good. And it should look like this because the things that we print on for the vellum to burn your screen is 11 by 17. So it has to be 11 by 17 that you're working from. We're gonna start with the text tool, which is over here in your tools on the sidebar. It's a T on the MacBook, and guys, make sure you write the shortcut down. So anytime you need right key options, so like if you have a cursor, you know, you right click to get more options. For the MacBook, you hit control on the keyboard and then click whatever it is you're trying to get right key options for. So if you look up at my screen, um, now I have some, I could do the vertical type tool, I could do the regular horizontal one, and there's some other options. Each one of these tools have other options. If you guys want to explore a little whenever you're... Control on the keyboard and you just hold control down and then click on what it is you're trying to get more options for We're today just going to do the horizontal type tool for practice So if you click that then you'll get like a little cursor um, Like a little type cursor for your key and then just click on the paper and it's gonna give you a blinking cursor You can just type something um, whatever you want to type for practice and then I want you guys to mess around with this font, okay? So highlight your font. How do I change the color? Okay, well, okay. So we're not going to ever change the color for creating a design for this because you're going to choose your colors based on the ink that you choose, Reagan. But it's white. What's white? Oh, okay. You need to change. So you need to change it to black. Okay, so up at the top, there is a little black box. Do you see that in the, like, the settings? Oh. Or yours will be white, I guess. Yeah, but it's, it's black. Here, look up at my screen. See this box? It'll be a color. Okay, and then you click it, and then, yeah, just drag it to the bottom corner and hit OK so it's black. So for everything you guys create in Photoshop for a screen print design, it has to be purely black and white. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna have, gonna have you guys do right now. So look up at my screen, Ellie, and see that I highlighted it. And then up at the top, there's a drop down arrow for fonts. You can choose a different one. I'm just gonna keep the one I have. Up at the top, um, look up here. Yeah. If you guys look up at my screen, I'm doing the same thing too. Fonts are up here in this little drop down area. Um, I also want you guys to change the font size right now. So if you guys click in the drop down area, it only goes up to 72. I want you guys to go higher than 72. So how you do that is you double click on the actual, so right up here at the top, you double click on the actual number and then type in a number and then hit enter and then you're good. So typically you guys are going to go over 72. So if you want to move it, you're going to go over to your toolbar on the left. Your top tool should be the cursor tool, but it looks like a little cursor at the top. Click that and then you're able to move your font around wherever you want it. So move it somewhere. I don't know. Move it somewhere. Are you guys doing that over there, Spencer and Chase? Okay. Oh, okay. 
Now, while we're on the move tool, I also, actually, let's go back to the type tool. I want to show you something. I'm going to give you guys just a second to get caught up. That very top tool is a type tool. And then you just click on it and move around. The very top tool over here, here's your tools, is a type. There you go. And then you move around. Yeah, yours is big. Just type like high, maybe. So you gotta be on there. Your layer's awful large. Oh, check out your layer. like change your font to be have you ever seen like how people have like an arched font or like a fisheye font so it's big in the middle small on the side that's what I'm going to show you so we're going to go back to the type tool so go back to text type the T then get on top of your font what look up at the screen real quick if I'm off my font it's going to give me this for my mouse and that's going to make me start a new one if I'm on a pre-existing font, it gives me the cursor and I can type right into that font. So it's going to be annoying if you click outside of it. Hold on, let me show you again. It's going to make you a new thing to type. You don't want that. We're trying to edit the one we had before. So click text. Go onto the type, so onto the font so you have that little cursor and click in there. And then highlight it for me. And then when you get to this step, you're good. So that click... Um, no, this next part, because you can already be on the type tool. So make sure you're on the T, and then highlight your font. Click in there and highlight it. You're good. You guys are good. So that's where I want you to pause. So on the T. And then click onto the font. Yep. And then highlight it. You can double click to highlight. Perfect. Just double click to highlight. Or did you make a new one? You made a new one. So if something here, we'll get to layers in a minute. But if some see there's your high and something like that. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make like an arch or like a curve. So right next to earlier, Reagan was asking about her color change. So up at the top, there's that box. Yours should all be black because you have black. Next to it, there's like a little T on a hill. Click that little T on a hill and you're gonna get this. It's gonna say warp text. It's gonna give you a little box. And if you click the down arrow for style, you can find all kinds of stuff. An arch a flag, like whatever. I'm just going to do a plain old arch. Where's that? Next to the color block, there's a little T on a hill. Do you guys already know Photoshop? Yeah, you can that. Little T on a hill right up here next to the color block. Yep, you guys are good. When you guys are happy with what you've created, just hit OK. All right. Once you guys get something, just hit OK. This is just for practice, so whatever you have is good. Um, and then I want you to go back to, once you hit OK, go back to your main cursor tool. So that tool at the top, your moving tool. Go back to your move tool. So your cursor should look like this. Right under my hello, there's my cursor. That's what your cursor should look like. And then I want you guys, I want to show you a little trick. So sometimes when you like move your font, it, it'll click into these spaces and you actually want it like 
a little bit this way and, and it won't let you do it. So you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard and move it pixel by pixel, which is like really helpful when you're trying to line things up perfectly. So you see mine's barely moving, but sometimes that's super important. So use your cursor keys just so you know the, the up and down arrows to move it pixel by pixel. That's really helpful. Because when you guys create your designs, like if it's not aligned, I'm going to make you re I'm going to make you fix it. And, and to get it aligned, that pixel by pixel with the arrow keys is going to be helpful. Um, now I want to turn this sideways or like change the size based on like the size of the box. So shortcut here is command T. If you're on your cursor tool, as you should be, hit command T to get a box. Now some of your guys' computers already have your thing box. So you guys are good. Oh, you're good. You already have it back. Wait, how do I get my thing back? What's gone? Oh, your tool. How do I get the This one like a three. How do you remove yeah. them? So I just need you guys to man see. Oh, yeah. get out of there. Hit your hit this. I got it. And then get on your <gasps> get on your one and hit command T. Is it a different bar of things? Oh no, you must leave it. Let's delete all this. Now we're on here. And you actually don't need command T because you already have the bottom selected. You guys are good. I feel like it Command T. Okay, cool. So once your box is selected, um, we're gonna do a couple of things. One, uh, I want to show you guys like to make it bigger or smaller. You can obviously go from the corner tool um and move it around. But but key thing here, writers, write this down. If you hold shift down. It's gonna keep it the same size no matter what. So see, I'm getting are the same proportion. So I'm getting smaller, but it's staying the correct proportion, and I'm getting bigger, and it's staying the correct proportion. If I let go of that shift, I can make it skinny, fat, whatever. But shift keeps it the same proportion. And then I want to show you guys if you go, and you might already know this, but if you go above the corner, so look up at my little cursor. Here I'm on the corner. If I go above it, it gives me a curve and I can turn my font. Again, say I want to get it exactly up and down, but it's kind of off here and I can't get it. Just hit shift and it'll put it perfectly parallel up and down. And there was one more thing I wanted to show you guys this. Oh, this is kind of fun. Um, if you want to reverse it, you can... So watch real quick, watch me do this. Say you want to reverse, you can do this with an image too. Just like keep scrolling, ah, my fingers, my fingers gone. <laughs> keep scrolling past and it'll reverse it. So that could be done with an image too, which is really helpful um, just to reverse that image. Okay, so anyway, there's that. I want you guys to do something to your font real quick, whether it's reverse it, um, make it short fat, make it sideways, whatever. Change your font one way and then we'll move on. You can also, you can turn it sideways if you want. And then if you hold shift, like say you want it exactly up and down. Wait, go back. How do we change the font from there? You can hold shift and it'll make it exactly up and down. Or you can let go of shift and do it on your own. Oh, I figured it out. Got it? Okay. All right, so that's all the things to do with font. Now I'm gonna move on to an image. So we are gonna pull up Google Chrome. Don't do Safari, it takes five years on those MacBooks. Get on Google Chrome. And I want you to search for an image. 
I want you guys to search for an image like butterfly silhouette, butterfly outline, a black, a purely black and white image. I'm not going to because I want to show you an example. Oh, no, you can look at whatever. So I'm going to do not, not a silhouette to show you what it looks like, but I need you guys to make sure it's a black and white image. Okay. Hey, writer, remember when I had you write down the right key options where shift click on the image? This it pertains to this too. So if I want to save this image, control, click on the image to get the right key options and save image as and save it to the desktop so we can find it. So that's control click. So, Ellie, you already saved it? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on to that here in one sec. Has everybody saved their image? No. Okay. What did I save it at? Whatever, as long as it's saved to the desktop. Yeah. Oh, oh, stay on page. I did not mean to do that. I did that. So, we good? Okay, go back to Photoshop, minimize that. Now, if you look, okay, Ellie and Chloe, do you see up at the top of your thing, the, the top bar, it says Chrome. Does it? Next to the Apple? Yeah. So click anywhere in Photoshop, like on the black back screen to get it to say Photoshop. There you go. So if your top bar says Chrome, Max Weird, it keeps you in, like it keeps your file at the top in whatever you just got out of until you click something new. So everybody just like, just to help you out, click somewhere in the black space on Photoshop to make sure your files are correct. So once you do that, you're gonna go to File Open. So you know how we went to File New? We're actually gonna go to File Open, which is the next one down. And you're gonna find on the desktop your thing you just saved and open her up. multimedia like he's ahead of me on everything I'm doing so when I'm gone next class if you need help 
please utilize him. Like, he is knowing all of this already. Okay, so um, if you're on the computer, I just want you to look up at my screen. You're not going to do this. If you're a writer, I want you writing this down. I just want to show you guys how it doesn't really work with an actual image. But if that's all you have, I want to show you how to make it work. So this has a million colors. We're never going to be able to print this on the film and then burn it into a screen. It has to be solid black and white. So we're going to go up to image adjustments and threshold. That's what I need the writers to write down. Image adjustments threshold. This turns it solely to black and white. And Right. So an actual image doesn't work that well. However, you can move this tick mark to go bigger or smaller with it and hit OK. And then from here, I would use my eraser tool. Um, I'm not going to have you guys use the eraser tool, but writers, will you also write down anytime you're using the eraser tool or like a pen tool, see my circle here? To make it bigger or smaller, the brackets right next to P on the keyboard. So computer people, locate your brackets on the keyboard. It's right next to the letter P. They make it bigger and smaller. One bracket makes it bigger, one bracket makes it smaller. So parentheses are these. Brackets are like the square ones. Yes? Right next to the letter P on the keyboard. And that makes it bigger and smaller. So that's for your eraser or your, um, and I'm going to erase this. Okay. Uh, your eraser or your pen tool. So now I've got mine looking like your guys's, right? It's all black and white. So we're ready to move it. Computer people, get on your move tool. It's the top tool, the move tool. And then if you guys look at the screen, do you see how I have two tabs here? I have a tab for, I have a tab for my key, kitty, and then I have a tab for my actual project. Oh, I don't have that. Wait. You, you do. I'll show you. I don't know about the picture. It's okay. That's what I'm showing you right now. Ali, look up at the screen. I do have it. You have two tabs right here under your things. There's a, just like if you're in, um, you know, a window thing, two tabs. So here's the key. Everyone just watch me for a minute, okay? You're going to click on the cap. Do not let go. My finger is still on my keyboard. I am holding it down. I'm dragging it up with my other hand, opening, like setting it, resting it on that tab, bringing it to the paper. If you don't, put your cursor on top of the paper. I still have my other finger clicked. Bring it on top of the paper, let go, it'll appear. Uh, it'll, un here, hold on. Can you say that again slowly? Yeah, so... Hold on. First, I want to say, watch me make it bigger, Reagan. Do you see how blurry it's getting? Yeah. Then hit enter, and it'll clear up. Okay. I will say it again. I'm going to say it again. Click on the image. Don't let go. Drag with your other hand up to the tab that you're working on. Don't let go. Drag it down to the paper. Then you can let go. It is challenging, I know. But we're going to get through it together, and you guys are going to do a little practice next. Uh -huh. What am I doing? Okay, click. Don't let go. Now drag it. You're probably going to have to do the screen test. Um, it might be a weird file. PNG on the screen test. Actually, hold on. Okay. I can do can something else it? for you guys. We're going to trick it. What if it's a JPEG? It should work. <laughs> do what? Did you say something? When you save it, if you do it as a JPEG, it should always work. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't have an option. <laughs> so we're going to magic wand and click on these bad boys. Wait a second. And then edit. Oh. Cut. Oh. 
No, no, no. Don't go back to that hello. Just delete that, guys. Um, this is just practice, too. So I want to show you guys a couple more things real quick that I don't think you need to do. So if everybody just wants to watch me and write it, you can write this down. So if you look over here, these are your layers. And if you've heard anything about Photoshop, you've heard about layers. It's basically like you're creating a collage on paper and you haven't put the glue down yet. So you can move this magazine piece, this magazine piece, like think like that. However, I can't move my hello until I'm clicked on it over here. So make sure if you're trying to move your hello, you're clicked on it. But if you notice, my cat is on top and I don't want that because it's blocking my word. So anything that's on top, which I don't know what this layer is, anything that's on top of your layers is gonna be on top. Anything that's at the bottom of your layers is at the bottom. So if I were to just click and drag and scroll it up, I put the hello on top of the cat. So look, look, watch again, watch carefully. Um, I'm going to click this cat and put it on top. Now look, it went on top of my hello, but I don't want that. So I'm going to click my hello, drag it to the top. So it's on top of my kitty. So it's basically like a, a little layers thing in the collage, whatever's on top is on top. Um, but, and then I just want you guys to watch the rest of this. I'm not gonna, not gonna make you do this. So I want to show you the magic wand tool and the lasso tool. So the magic wand tool over to the side toolbar looks like a magic wand. That's going to, if you look over here, I'm going to select, say I want to get rid of that E or duplicate it. I can click the E, see how it's got those dashes around there now. Um, I want to edit, copy that, edit, paste, then go to my move tool and I made another one. So cutting, you can also cut that and cut it out and paste it. Um, that's just a cool tool. That little lasso tool will grab anything you're working on. But if you look over here, like my pixels are kind of all over the place. So I would have to click on all those with that. Uh, magic wand tool so I can use the lasso tool which is right above the magic wand tool and I can actually just like select just draw with my hand I want to select that whole area maybe I want to delete it make sure you're on the correct layer and then edit I can cut that so see you later eyeball so just have on your radar my writers if you just want to write down lasso tool in, in a magic wand tool and guys you can you can YouTube any of this so if I am gone and like nobody knows what to do first of all I'm gonna be on zoom so you can zoom me at any time but um, you can also YouTube like <laughs> well I'll be on your iPad I can be on your iPad 
Okay. You can zoom me. At, yeah, you can each zoom me. Yeah, but it, then it's like my... It's, it was weird when we did it last time. Like, my voice didn't project over. So you couldn't hear me. Um, last, last thing before we flatten this bad boy. Uh, I want to show you a shape tool. And you can do this with me. Over here at the bottom, you might have a line. Here, I'll hit control click. These could be all of your options. You might have a line. You might have a square. You might have a circle. Right click. And you guys, I want you to make either a circle or a square. So look for your shape tool. Right click over here. Uh, control. So right click is control click. This is pretty. So control click so you can see a square or a circle. Okay. And then I want you guys to put a outline of something over your shape. So maybe you want to do a rectangle. Oops. Maybe you want to do a square. If you want a perfect square or a perfect circle, what do you think you have to do? Shift. Shift. Correct. If you want a perfect circle or a perfect square, hold shift down and it'll make it a perfect circle or a perfect square. So if you notice I have a black box, your guys' settings are up at the top. And this is the same for like a word thing. So your fill, you can do nothing for fill. You can make your, your stroke black and larger to give it an outline. That's all up at the top. Ooh, that's cool. What was that? I like it. Um, I would argue that using the shapes tool and what you guys just did there. Using the shapes tool to put a box or a circle around a design is going to make it a lot better. Are you guys listen? Okay. So you guys know how to do it, but make sure you only do black on your design. Okay. Um, I mean, today you can mess around. But when you do your actual thing. So what what can make a crappy design a good design? What did I just say? What would I argue? Say your design just needs something. What could you use? An outline of a circle or a rectangle. Typically, like, that's really popular right now. You guys might have noticed that when you guys did your logos, when you researched the logo design, um, a lot of them are in circles or squares. So to finish, the last thing I need you guys to do is flatten your image. So if we went to file, save as right now and save this, it would only reopen in Photoshop because we have all of our layers and it's only going to read as a Photoshop file. So we need to flatten it. So go to layer and at the very bottom is flatten image up at the top middle layer and then at the bottom flatten your image it's gonna it's gonna take all of your layers and turn them into one so now you just glued your collage to the paper you're done you, you glued it down um so flatten it file save as i want you guys to save this to the desktop as your group people in your group's name and then you're going to airdrop it to me in a minute so file, save as, save it to the desktop with your names. We'll airdrop it later. Wait, just kidding. Just kidding. I don't want this one. I want your one you're making next. You guys can close out. You don't need to save it. Yeah, I don't want that one. Don't save that one. Now, for your guys' assignment today... For the rest of the class, I'm going to have you guys, and then at the end of class, I'm going to show you how to download a font. But for the rest of class, I want you guys to, in your groups, recreate this design as best as you can. So matching it as best as you can to this design. Every element I just taught you is used here, okay? The only thing I didn't teach you is how to invert an image. So see how these are white, these images? I actually looked up... Gosh, dang it. I actually looked up. Let's get that cat up here again. This is Byington. Good, how are you? Oh, 
Okay. Okay. I'll let her know. Thanks. Bye. Bailey, you got to go down with all your stuff to Miss Lillard. I'm sorry. This is why I don't want to sit like that. Yeah, I know. I literally just said mom to get quarantine. When the phone rang? Yes. Did you already know? No. Hey, you're out for Thanksgiving, dude. <laughs> I have a master's tomorrow. We're not even done. Oh, you have to. We're not so, to Bailey, for my class, you can make your design in an app on your iPad or draw it and just send it to me and I can finish it for you so you're ready to go when we get back. Okay. You have the whole time and that's all you need to do is create a design for a t-shirt. And I can finish it for you. Sorry. Yeah. Are we drawing, like, the... You can. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Um, hey, guys. Regroup for just one quick sec. So look up at the screen. The only thing I didn't show you was how to invert an image. So that um, cat on here and that paintbrush and that coffee mug are white on a black circle. Are you guys watching? So to turn your image white, you're going to go to uh, image adjustments. And instead of hitting the threshold, right above there is invert. And that'll swap it for you. So if you had a, yeah, that's creepy. But if you had um, a silhouette of like those birds, and you wanted a black background and you wanted the birds to be white, you just invert it. So, yep, so the, for the rest of class, you guys are just going to be working on this, and I'll come around to help you. You're going to try to recreate this to be exactly as that. We went through it all. I know we went through it kind of quickly, um, but I will be here to help you guys, okay? we got to do these back bars.